IGT manufactures the most reliable gaming machines on the market today. But inevitably, problems can and do occur that require the troubleshooting expertise of a trained slot mechanic. IGT designs fold isolation features into all of its machines for easy identification and correction of such problems. And a technician needs to be familiar with several important areas. This video will present those troubleshooting tools necessary for the beginning and intermediate slot mechanic. It is necessary that the machine technician or slot mechanic be familiar with basic machine setup, machine modes, especially game mode, machine tilt codes, game self-test functions, and finally, IGT modular machine design. It's the purpose of this video to present these areas in enough detail to familiarize slot mechanics with them and their importance. However, further study will be important. After viewing this video, the slot mechanic should have an increased understanding and ability regarding the troubleshooting process. First, let's examine some basic setup functions. Machine setup is accomplished through a variety of actions. These range from simple checking and setting hardware configurations, such as power and hopper level settings, to more complex option selection. Here, we will assume that all equipment is completely installed. IGT real game boards require a game prom and a real prom, along with dip switch settings as part of game or machine setup. Sound volume is set using the pots on the side of the cage. On the front of the card cage is the dip switch selection chart to aid with switch settings for maximum hopper pay, real sound, game cycle, speed, and various progressive settings. Other setup options are selected using the self-test button while reading the coins played display. Page zero to set credit mode and jackpot bell. Page six to set denominations in machines without bill validators. Page seven to set programmable hopper size per dip switch settings. Eight for setting partial pays. And finally, nine for setting progressive options, again per dip switch settings. The information required for setup can be found in the field service manuals which can be obtained for your particular machines. It's strongly advised that the technician carry the pocket size S plus diagnostics guide on the casino floor or gaming floor to aid with troubleshooting and testing of IGT S plus games. Machine setup with IGT video games is even easier. As you can see, the typical IGT video game board is configured a little differently. It requires a game IC, or prom, four character proms, and a cap, or a color attribute prom. Here, the dip switch is only used for setting the line frequency, 50 or 60 hertz, and that is done with switch 1. The rest of the switches are factory set or unused. Hopper level setting on both real and video games is done by physically moving the metal probe that senses coin level. As mentioned earlier, video optioning is very user friendly. Page 3 of the self test screens allows for a selection of a variety of options, including, but not limited to, credit mode, type of coin counting, and progressive mode. Page 5 allows sound setup. Page 6, in machines without bill validators, allows setting the denomination. Page 7, to set hopper size. Page 8, for background color. 11, for selecting animation. And page 12, sets the deal speed. IGT manufactures a wide variety of video games, and there will be differences between them in the self-test pages. Some will include game type selection, the double up feature, whether or not to display a pay table, or other applicable options. Again, refer to the IGT service manual for your specific game. Now we'll have the game set up and operating. At this point, it's a good idea to have an understanding of what to expect from those games and familiarize ourselves with the five game modes. These game modes are the idle mode, game play mode, the tilt mode, the self-test mode, and statistical data mode. While a game is waiting for a player, it's normally in the idle mode. On any IGT gaming machine, game play occurs as soon as the game accepts a coin. At that point, 
the player has the option of adding further coins or spinning the reels by pulling the handle or pressing the spin switch. Notice that the S plus stepper slot prior to coin insertion, the insert coin light is illuminated. And the only display lit is the coins played display, showing the number of coins played on the last game. The reels show the last game played. Upon inserting a coin, the coins played display is updated. The coin accepted lamp is illuminated and a tone is sounded. At this point, the player can only insert more coins or spin the reels. The player can neither cash out nor insert bills into a bill validator. With the maximum number of coins played, the insert coin lamp extinguishes and the coin lockout de-energizes, returning any further coins inserted to the coin tray. With the typical video game, prior to inserting any coins, the game will also be in the idle mode. There are no lights showing on the player panel, and final cards from the last hand are shown on the screen, as is the number of coins played during that hand. If credit mode is in effect, the game should show zero credits, and an attractor will periodically flash in the upper center of the screen. And on the right center side of the screen will be displayed Game Over. Inserting a coin will display the back of the cards. The Game Over display disappears, the Coins End display is updated, the attractor continues, and the Deal Draw lamp is illuminated. Again, the player now has the option of playing the hand, as is, or of inserting more coins. And again, the player cannot cash out or insert bills into the bill validator. Inserting further coins with both the IGT S Plus and video games only updates the Coins In and Coins Played displays until the maximum number of coins is bet. All further coins will be returned to the coin tray. When a machine detects a malfunction, it will enter the tilt mode. A tilt code or message appears, the top part of the candle flashes slowly, and all gameplay is suspended. The coin lockout de-energizes, returning any further coins inserted into the coin tray. Tilt codes can generally be divided into three categories. Machine malfunctions, data processing errors, and security messages. The S Plus machines present a numerical tilt code in the winner paid display window, while the video machines display a tilt message on the monitor in graphics. The IGT service manual is the official reference for tilt codes and solutions. And with the S Plus diagnostics guide, the technician with even only a little experience can deal with most tilt solutions. The most common tilt codes for an S Plus game includes 21, coin in, time out, 3100, extra coin paid, 3200, coin out, time out, 3300, hopper empty, 40, a general real tilt, 41 through 45, specific real, 1 through 5, real tilts, 49, real mechanism, 61, CMOS RAM error, and 62, EEPROM error. When a machine tilt occurs on a video game, a service display message will appear on the screen. Call attendant is superimposed on the center of the screen, and below that will be another message in white lettering stating the problem. In this case, coin in, time out. In the troubleshooting section of the service manual will be a graphic showing typical service message locations. Following this will be a table showing service messages with message type, screen display, situation, and where to find the section for the resolution of the problem. Additional messages may include link down for games on progressive link, card cage accessed for games that require security on the microprocessor board, printer error for certain jurisdictions requiring printed receipts, and cache door or cache box for games with bill validators.